Hey everyone, Phil and Sam here with another photography tip. Today we are talking about macro photography. What is it? How do you achieve it? What equipment do you use? So welcome to this video and Sam, first of all, what is macro photography for those of us that might not know what it is? So macro photography really it comes down to making very, very small things seem larger than life. and and. You know, it's sort of the best way I can think of putting it because ultimately what you're doing is you're, you know, getting really, really close in on something uh, and really seeing the details, the fine details. I mean, you know, you think of an ant and you have these incredible macro photography or macro photographs where the ant looks huge. I mean, you, you can see his eyes, you can see his antenna, you can see, I don't know all the, the lingo for an ant, but you know, you, you see this amazing definition. And, and I think one thing I love about macro photography is that a lot of scientists actually use it. And mm -hmm. you're able to see these amazing details of, uh, of different things and, and you know, things that you would never be able to see without it. And uh, the other side, not to jump too far ahead, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah, one reason I love macro lenses is that a, it's a great lens. It's a normal lens. You know, this is a 105 millimeter, so great portrait, great, you know, standard lens. But it has this macro ability, and mm -hmm. I'm able to, you know, close focus on wood grain, on the, the details of leaf, on the details of, of anything really. And so it's almost two lenses in one, which mm -hmm. I, which I really love about it. So when you're talking about close focus, that's one thing that I think I was even confused about. Uh, before talking about macro photography with you is that it's not just about being able to zoom into an ant or to zoom into whatever and get really close to it. It's it's that close focus, being able to focus on something that's like a foot away or inches away or whatever, depending on the lens that you have. Because some lenses you can't focus that close and that's what makes it a macro lens. Is that kind of correct? Yeah, so it, it, as you look at different lenses out there, uh, you know, for example, this this Tokina 11 to 16, it's it's a very wide lens, and I can close focus to about 0.3 meters, so about a foot, and it, it's so wide though, so I can get very close to it, and it you know it's still in focus. Now this is a 105, so this is you know ex much more of a telephoto than than wide angle, and yet this one can close focus to one foot as well. Mm -hmm. So they both can close focus to the same amount, but when you think of, you know, a 11 millimeter, you're seeing all this. Mm -hmm. A 105, I'm seeing just that. Mm -hmm. But it's the same, you know, close distance. focus. It's the same yeah. distance, um, and, and that's really where the difference comes in. And you know, there, there's 40 millimeter, 60 millimeter, 105, all these different uh, focal lengths for macro, and it really just comes down to how close you can get to the subject mm -hmm. and uh, the, and the details you get from that. Okay, so. For our students who are watching this and they want to go out and take a macro photo, mm -hmm. what what do they do? And we're going to be showing some B-roll of video that we've shot with this lens actually in macro mode, but what do students actually go out and do when they're out there with their camera? Well, ultimately you need, you need a macro lens. Um, and you know, personally I love it because it's two lenses in one. If you can't afford it, maybe try renting one and, and just see because macro photography is very specialized. And, you know? and these lenses you're saying macro, are they actually called macro lenses? What makes it a macro versus right. not macro so, lens? So that's each, each camera man, that's a good question. Uh, each camera man, manufacturer has a different sort of lingo for it, I mm -hmm. guess, or different jargon. Uh, Nikons are micro, actually. They don't call them macro, they call them <laughs> micro. Um, and really it's because I, and I might be mistaken on this, maybe you just cut this out, but <laughs> Nikon makes uh, microscopes. Mm, and they mm -hmm. actually, the technology I believe in this lens is from their microscopic lenses that they make for, for scientists to you know, obviously see much more detail than this, but uh, yeah, so they call micro. Others are, are just macro. Um, mm. Typically, if you, you know, depending on what camera you have, if you're looking for a Sony, a Fuji, a Canon, a Nikon, it's pretty easy to know which ones are mi micro or macro mm -hmm. um, just by searching macro. I mean, macro will come up as micro for Nikon yeah. or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, really, you need that lens. And some of them, I, I believe, you know, like the, the 24 to 70 Canon uh, had a macro, you know, sort of mode in, in it 
built into it and it basically allowed you to close focus i believe it is only at 24 millimeter mm -hmm. it might have been throughout the whole spread but uh as you basically spun your your uh, your focus ring there's a certain point where there's a little yellow line that mm -hmm. said macro mm -hmm. and that was because you could do you know extreme close-up mm -hmm. photography with it um but yeah, so it, it, you really just need the lens. That's okay. what it comes down to. So it's taking the lens, finding something that's close to you, and shooting that fo photo of whatever that, that may be. And depending on whether you have a wide lens or a more telephoto lens, you'll be able to get that extreme close-up. Like the, with this lens, the 11 to 16 millimeters, this is really wide. So I'm not going to get that detailed shot of the ant with the antenna and their eyes that you might be able to get with that lens or right. like even bigger telephoto lens right um, well at, at the same time though you know you take a, a 70 to 100 mm -hmm. you know sort of standard kit lens for for a lot of pro photographers that close focus is i think two and a half feet mm -hmm. maybe maybe a little bit closer and you know you might be thinking oh well 200 millimeter at two and a half feet 100 millimeter at one foot maybe those are kind of similar it, it's just not going to be the same the same feel the same detail the same that that same sort of close-up look to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um at the same time i know a lot of people love 40 millimeter macros you know you still get you can get even closer than one foot mm -hmm. um and and really get those details and and being a little bit wider can help in some ways mm -hmm. uh at the same time i've seen people shoot thousand millimeter macros and <laughs> those are crazy that's you know the watch the watch arm moving mm -hmm. in, in your in your uh in your watch and that stuff's pretty incredible too uh, w just one quick sidebar mm -hmm. You have to watch your f-stop when you're shooting macro photography okay. um, because it's such a shallow depth of field at that point you might need a lot of light so you can close down have more things in focus because mm -hmm. if you're shooting you know so close focus with a long lens uh at uh, f 2.8 mm -hmm. your, your your plane of field that's in focus is going to be you know a few millimeters maybe an inch if that uh, I think that's, so, yeah, that's yeah. a good point to make that macro photography is not about necessarily about shallow depth of field. It's not about a wide open aperture. It's right. about focusing on something close if your lens allows it. Yes, absolutely. And it's really, it's about the details. And if mm -hmm. you can only see the details of, you know, the ant's Small face, plane, yeah. you want to see the entire ant, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so being able to stop down and having enough light is... is uh, something that I think a lot of people run into and why a lot of nature photographers are able to do it because you have all this sunlight coming in mm -hmm. uh, and so you can stop down a little bit maybe boost your ISO up a little bit uh, you know shutter has to be fast because it's difficult to animals but uh, yeah so it's something to think about when you go out there try closing down your f-stop I, I personally think like f8 is typically a sweet spot mm -hmm. um, and yeah but it, it's really depends on what you're shooting I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson about macro photography. If you did enjoy it and you want to take your photography skills to the next level, check out our photography masterclass. There's a link in the description below and it's a great all encompassing class for really for beginner photographers and you want to just learn all the basics and some intermediate steps towards taking better photos. Check it out and uh, yeah, we'll see you in another video on the YouTube channel, please subscribe and hopefully we'll see you in the class. Bye guys. See ya.